Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Ray and Judy Cloutier from Calgary, Alberta, in thanksgiving for 56 years of marriage, which they celebrated on April the 14th of this year, and for the spiritual needs of their family and friends. The second is from Lorraine Cooper from Sudbury, Ontario, in memory of her husband, Don, who died April the 2nd, 2005, and for the deceased members of the Cooper and Noonan families. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We gather to begin as we should always begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we gather this day in the presence of our God who has gifted us so much, and yet so often we fail to express our gratitude, we've asked forgiveness of God and of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. My brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obliged to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. The word of the Lord. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord. Let your steadfast love come to me. According to your promise, do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your ordinance.
And the Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. So Jesus went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And then the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you're full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for alms those things that are within and see everything will be clean for you. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Paul, writing to the Galatians, says, you, want, you who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You've fallen away from grace. In other words, to choose compliance with the law as one's ideal in life is really to reject the freedom of the Spirit of God that helps us to make conscientious decisions and choices according to the law of Christ, according to love. You know, when asked, I try to make it clear that to live according to the Holy Spirit is the ideal, not the law, the Spirit of God. As Paul says, working, faith working through love is the only thing, the only thing that counts. When people ask about compliance with the law, we, should always, we shouldn't have any problem with any law that doesn't either contradict the law of love or the, law of the, or the teaching of Christ. Love is the ideal, not the law. The law shows me the limitations of my behavior. It shows me where I have failed, but it's never the ideal. Pope Francis, reflecting on this particular text or this part of the letter to the Galatians, wrote, Works of love directed to one's neighbor are the most perfect external manifestations of the interior grace of the Spirit. When reflecting on the, on the teachings of St. Thomas Aquinas, he also writes, the foundation of the new law is in the grace of the Holy Spirit, who is manifested in the faith which works through love. 
St. Thomas continues to write in, in his works that mercy is the greatest of all virtues. He wrote, in itself, mercy is the greatest of the virtues since all of the others revolve around it. And more than this, it makes up for their deficiencies that is, this is particular to the superior value, and as such, it is proper to God to have mercy, through which his omnipotence is manifested to a greater degree. Megan McKinnon, writing a, a reflection on his letter to Galatians, sums it up in the following way. Stand firm, stay free, stay with the grace of Jesus, shared with us in the power of the Spirit. What really matters is the expression of our faith in action that brings love to others, whether it be food, clothing, shelter, medicine, support, friendship, release from burdens or oppression. And Jesus is also in the gospel intent on teaching us that it isn't the law, it's not details and traditions that make us faithful, but rather intent and practice. That's what Jesus confronts when he meets the Pharisees. In today's text, he agrees to, he accepts the invitation of the Pharisee to go to his house to dine. We have to recall that meals were an important indicator of status, and Jesus was often scandalized people by eating with tax collectors and people that they consider to be sinners. So we find Jesus reclining at the table, and immediately his host, a Pharisee, criticizes him for neglecting the ritual pre-meal washing. Jesus laments the legalism that's so entrenched in the minds and hearts of so many Jews at that time and issues a challenge about priorities. Almsgiving is far more important to God than ritual cleanliness. In essence, I think Jesus is really saying to the Pharisees, if you were as concerned about cleaning your hearts as you are about your hands, you'd be far better people. Jesus knows them well and condemns them for being full of greed and evil, but publicly going through formalities of being pure. Jesus speaks always of God the Father, who makes both the outside and the inside of all creation, and knows everyone inwardly, no matter what we're doing. In the Gospels, I think that you can say that we Jesus really reacts to the Pharisees for two things. The first is their concentration on externals. As long as the matters of religion were carried out, that's really all that mattered for them, the externals. Their hearts were devoid of warmth and compassion for the widow, the dispossessed, for the poor. Their hearts may have been lacking in charity and justice, but as long as they went through the ritual, they considered themselves good and justified in the eyes of God. The second preoccupation he points out was their, or their preoccupation with detail. You know, how much, how do you figure out the tithe, the washing of the hands and all the ritual cleaning? We as individuals and as a church have to take very seriously the criticisms of Jesus, his criticisms toward the Pharisees and ensure that we don't act like them. He constantly criticized them for thinking of themselves as the best, the most aware, the most prepared, or even the most efficient. We have to recall that we're called to be faithful to the poor, to the marginalized. In other words, we have to be open to being evangelized by them and the most vulnerable parts of humanity. We're called to an inner conversion that means being touched profoundly by that experience of the poor, being touched by the Word of God, and recognize the free action of the Spirit in all believers. In his book, his work, Evangelium Gaudium, which Francis wrote about the missionary call of the church, he wrote the following, and it's directed to priests about their homilies. And he said as follows, if in the course of the liturgical year, the parish priest speaks about temperance ten times, but only mentions charity or justice two or three times, an imbalance results. And precisely those virtues which ought to be most present in preaching and catechesis are overlooked. The same thing happens when we speak more about the law than about grace, more about the church, than about Jesus Christ. 
more about the Pope than the Word of God. Please stand and join me as we pray together. As we gather this day, we are joined by thousands of people across this country, and they watch us faithfully, and many of them write in, and they ask that we remember in this celebration their intentions, their prayers. And so at this time, I want to remember all the people who have written in and the specific intentions that they've asked that we remember in this mouth. For them, for those intentions, we pray to the Lord. We pray in a very special way for peace in our world, especially in the Middle East. We pray that there be justice for the peoples who are without land, particularly the many refugees. We pray for peace in our hearts and in our homes. And for this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the many people in our hospitals and nursing centers who are suffering this day, and particularly the victims of cancer. We pray for them, for their caregivers, for all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Thanks, Joe. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created human, and when he was, <clears throat> you created us, and when man was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. And through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and giving the cup to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire Church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And, all <clears throat> and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. faithful to the teaching, informed by the teaching of Jesus, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Peace, Joe.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Will those of you at home join with me now in this prayer of Cardinal Newman? God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. I am a link in a chain. I am a bond of connection between people. He has not created me for nothing. I shall do good. I shall do his work. I shall be an angel of peace, a preacher of truth in my own place. Whatever, wherever I am, I can never be thrown away. If I am in sickness, my sickness will serve him. If I am in perplexity, my perplexity will serve him. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow will serve him. He does nothing in vain. Amen. And let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to two donors. The first are Ray and Judy Cloutier from Calgary, Alberta. The second is Lorraine Cooper from Sudbury, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to hear again any reading, gospel, or homily from this week's Masses, visit our website at www.canadiandailymass.com. That's www.canadiandailymass, one word, dot com. I come.